My parents are currently renovating their house and they have asked me to help them install their TV so it's mounted and then they want to remove all of the entertainment system devices underneath and the plan is to move everything over here into a separate closet so that they don't need any devices over here and everything is controlled from here. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the whole process. Let's get started. So the first thing to do is figure out where we're going to add the cables behind the TV so that everything works. So first I'm gonna plan out where I'm going to mount my TV. Here I'm marking where I'm gonna put the mount, which is about eye level when I'm sitting on the couch. And then I'm going to double check for any studs as well as any fire block. This is an exterior wall, so that might be a problem. Now that I found the location I want, this is where I'm going to run a conduit through so that I can feed all the wires from the closet to behind the TV. <laughs> so here we have our first problem this is a fire block on an exterior wall so i'm gonna have to drill through it and going up there were a few more so i ended up cutting some of the other sheetrock out now let's head to the other end so here in the closet this is where we decided we're going to have the other end and now let's head into the attic and look what we're gonna do up there. And so here is the top of where we're going to be drilling into. And for this project, I'm going to be using conduit so that we can then feed the cables from the TV all the way to the closet. Now this conduit is the one inch that I got at the Home Depot, but I would recommend doing something bigger, an inch and a half, two inches would be much better. So now once we have the holes drilled all the way down to our new boxes, I'm going to duct tape some string on the end of the conduit and I pushed it down from the top and they pull it through with the string and that worked pretty well. As you can see, I also fed through a cat cable as well for ethernet. I have a full video on how to do that linked above. And then back up in the attic, we did use some great stuff spray foam to fill in the holes where we put in the conduit and it also kind of locked it in place. And here you can see on the wall, kind of some of the struggles we had. Here we had to cut a bigger hole to be able to get and feed the conduit through and drill that other hole through those fire blocks. So that took a little bit of extra work, but we have some drywall guys coming to finish this all up. And then here you can see some of the spraying foam cape through. So we're just gonna clean that up real nice. Next, we're going to add these low voltage boxes so that then we can have a nice cover on this and it keeps it looking really clean. And then I found this recessed wall plate that it will allow the cables to come through and give it a finished look. And here on the other side, we're gonna do the same. Just make sure we feed the ethernet cable through first. Now, what are all these strings for? Well, that's gonna be how we pull the different cables through. Now, if you don't have the string through, is what you do is you tape a little baggie on the string on one end, and then on the other end, you use a vacuum and it will suck the bag through with the string. Oh yeah, we got it. And then you can easily have a pull string added, and we did that a few times to get all the strings here. All right, we almost have all the dirty work done. Now it's time to get to the fun part where we start installing all of the different components and routing the cables. So first, let me show you what components we're going to be using to make this whole setup possible. So the main thing we'll be using is this Samsung 1080p TV. Now we can upgrade this later to something 4K, but it's a 60 inch, it should work pretty well. We're going to be mounting that on the wall with this fixed TV wall mount. We don't need it to tilt or anything, so this will just make it flush against the wall. Now we're going to have an HDMI cable go from the TV into the closet. And so here I purchased this HDMI cable. It is 30 feet long. It does support 4K. There was a lot of talk about how longer cables aren't as good or the picture isn't as clear. Everyone in the review said this worked really well. Now the next component is we want to have over the air channels without paying for a service. So here we purchased this indoor outdoor antenna that will uh, connect to those channels. And then is what we're gonna do is we're going to plug this into a box that converts the channels into a digital signal in the home that we can connect to over Wi-Fi. Now there are two different options here. This is HD home run. So essentially you just plug the antenna into here and then you plug this into your Wi-Fi router or into your switch and then you use the HD home run app and you are able to view and connect to those channels on your phone or on your TV, um, whatever smart device you're using. Now, another option that we found is the Air TV 2. So this one directly integrates with Sling TV. So if you're already using Sling, this will just show up in the app and you'll have all those over the air channels in there instead of having to use a separate app. And then let's get to the main component. So here we do use an Apple TV. Um, I think this is the third generation, so it's not the 4K. Uh, we do like to have a Chromecast to instantly cast our videos from any device that comes over. And then we have a Harmony Hub that is able to control 
all these different devices and we also have a blu-ray player that we're going to plug in now instead of running four really long hdmi cables we're going to plug this all into this hdmi switch so the one cable is going to go to the out and then all of the components are going to be plugged into here and then we'll be able to easily switch between those components with the Harmony Hub. And with that, I also got this IR extension cable so that we'll be able to control the TV over IR with the Harmony Hub. I'll show you how we get that set up. And a few other things is you will need some HDMI cables to plug in all the components into the switch. I think I'm gonna get some shorter ones. And then here we got some network cable because we did put a router directly into the closet so that we'll be able to have them plug directly into the main router to get the best data speeds as possible. And then we got this cyber power power strip. This is a surge protector as well, so you wanna protect all of your components. And then I also recommend getting some Velcro strips for cable management. All right, let's go ahead and start installing the TV on the wall. Now that the mount is in place ready for the TV, before we put it up, I'm going to route my HDMI cable and my IR blaster for the Harmony Hub. All right, so now that I have my cables back, I have a few in here just in case I do want to eventually thread a new cable through. So I'm gonna keep one in there, but we're gonna use one of them to pull all these through. So I'm gonna attach them here with the electrical tape and then uh, we'll pull it through. And here I'm doing three different cables at once. So I'm going to be doing the HDMI, then I'm gonna do the IR extender cable, as well as a cat cable from the closet to the TV. All right, so now we got these ready to go. So we're gonna hold on to this one and pull the other one. This is really going really smooth. Yeah, thanks. I made a little comb tip on the electrical tape. Fill the end of it here. I see it! Woohoo! All right, now all the dirty work is done. We have the TV mounted. Um, when we did all the renovation here, we made sure that the electrician put a outlet in the wall. That is pretty easy to do on your own but it's nice that they were able to do it. And now we have no wires underneath the TV. It is totally floating. So now all I've done on the TV is plugged in one HDMI. Now let's head over to the closet and set up the rest of the components. So here in the closet, the HDMI is gonna come through here. We have a ethernet cable plugged directly in to the modem downstairs over a switch. And so that is plugged into this switch and plugged into this uh, Google Wi-Fi point so here it has the best data speeds and then any components that do need ethernet are going to be plugged into here and here's another option for a power strip we'll see how many components we need and what we're going to use all right so the first component is the four in one hdmi switch now this one does support up to 4k or 2k 3d and picture in picture which is pretty cool. And after a few months, that switch actually ended up dying. So I replaced it with this one. You just need to make sure that it can be controlled from the Harmony with IR. And now we're going to plug in the HDMI out right here. And now we're ready to start adding the other components. And this is what it looks like when everything has been added into the closet. It looks like I need to do a little cleanup to finish this off. Now here on the TV, I did mount the IR blaster where the IR receiver was on the TV. So you just kind of have to use the Harmony Hub to figure that out. And I'm mounting it with a command strip. So here are some of the other devices that we are using. This is kind of where everything starts. So let me explain what's happening here. Over here on the wall, we have our modem. So the internet comes into the house through there. And then on the back here, we have our Google Wi-Fi point where the internet is then routed from there into this switch. So the point in the closet is plugged into here and another point in the home is all wired directly to here. And then here we have some other devices that are wired into the switch so that they have access to the internet. So this is the Air TV. It is plugged directly into the antenna that we have in the attic. And so it gets the internet signal and then it's able to convert that signal into a digital signal and it's plugged into the internet because then you can go use the app on Apple TV. So you actually use this in the Sling TV app and then you can access those channels over the internet wherever you are. You don't need to 
be tied into the cable on your TV. This ties in, gives it to the internet, and then your other devices can access that. So most of this isn't required. If you do want to have digital TV, there's this or the HD Home Run that would work as well. But just make sure that you do have a solid internet connection going to your device so that you have the best internet available in your home for your different streaming devices. All right, now all of the components are in here. It is a bit messy, so let's see if we can make it better. And just like that, all of the wires are hidden and we are finished with the project. Now, one of my biggest concerns was having the wires everywhere in this room. You can see right here that if we didn't have this little cubby to hold all the devices, everything would just be laid about, cables would be everywhere, and really it's not a great look. So I looked on Amazon, I was searching for all kinds of different shelves, three tiered shelves, and I came upon this one that I thought would work really well. I did some measurements, made sure it would fit in here, made sure the Blu-ray player would fit and the other devices and kind of mapped it out and uh, ordered it and it fit perfectly in here. Another huge concern was all of the power cables. So instead of having the devices over on this side, because all those power cables would have had to come all the way over here, I decided let's put all the power cables right there, kind of tucked in the corner and then is what we're going to do is just hide the HDMI cable and the ethernet cable all into one little strand here so that you only see one cord over here and not a ton others. And if we didn't have this cubby, it really would be a mess. Now, a few changes I did make to the components is we have a Chromecast Ultra in here now instead of the regular Chromecast. Here, I've added a Bond device. So what that is able to do is it can control all the fans in the home. So if you have a fan that requires a remote, this can actually control them by turning them on and off. You can turn the light on and off and it makes all the fans in the house smart, which is cool. And then on the Harmony Hub, the cable that I bought doesn't fit into the back of the IR ports. So I went out and bought this 3.5 to 2.5 millimeter adapter where I was then able to plug in my IR cord that we threaded through and then plug it into the back of the Harmony Hub. And now we are able to control the TV by changing the volume, as well as turning it on and off when the closet is shut. <laughs> For a while we had the closet open because it can send out the signal, but in order to get right up to the TV, that is why we needed to thread the IR cable to the front so that it could attach to the IR blaster that's going to turn on and off the TV. So let me show you the back here. Um, it's kind of nice that I can just move this over if I want to adjust anything, I then have the option to do that. So I've done my best to wrap up all the cables, kind of organize them. There's definitely some more cable organization I could do. And then in the back there, we have the TP-Link switch. And as for the changes that we did to the internet, so the cable that comes into here is down where we have our main Wi-Fi router and switch. And so it comes into here and plugs into this Wi-Fi point. Then we have an ethernet cable that goes into the TP-Link switch over there. And then we can plug in the other devices like the Apple TV and the Chromecast Ultra right into that. So they have the best internet connection possible. There's no wireless involved. So if you have bad wireless, there's no problem with it being bad wireless in here because of course we have the point, but so far the wireless internet is working great and all of those devices being tied in is gonna be much faster whenever we're streaming and whatnot. And here you can see all the holes I added. I just used a razor blade to cut all those out. It had a pretty clean finish and now we don't see all of this mess uh, when we look through here. I could have just left off the back, but it, it wouldn't have looked very good. And we even have a spot to place the remote. So over here, we now have options to do some other things. We could put a DVD case with all of our DVDs in, or we could just fill it with more fun games that we could play instead of having it take up a whole row of a bunch of different devices or your whole entertainment center in front of your TV. So now the closet is fully complete. Let's go ahead and show you what the end result is over on the TV. And now here is our newly mounted TV. You can see it has a really nice clean look. There's no cables, there's no different devices collecting dust. It looks great. And then the only thing is at the very bottom, you do have the little IR blaster there. Um, so you can find different sizes. This one seemed to be very slim. This is actually from a Google TV that I had years and years ago, but that's beside the point, it still works. So let's go ahead and turn on our TV. Now, if I don't have my remote, I can easily do this from Google. Hey Google. Turn on Apple TV. And so there it turned on the TV and went to the correct input. And then if I wanna switch inputs, I can easily do that. Hey Google, turn on Chromecast. 
and now I can cast anything to my TV over the Chromecast. And the last option was to use a Blu-ray player. Hey Google, turn on Blu-ray. And now the Blu-ray player is on and I can go over there and put in the disc. I don't have to fiddle with the input and all these different devices. Everything is done in one. And then if I have my remote, I can easily turn up and down the volume just like that. And I have the option to control the Apple TV as well as the Blu-ray player here or whatever device that I have added to the TV. And when I'm all done, all I need to do is push the off button or ask Google to turn it off and it will turn off all the different devices. Hey Google, turn off Blu-ray. And just like that, all the devices have been turned off without having to scrounge around and find your remotes. And so that is how you can build an entertainment closet. Now this was a really fun project. It did take quite a bit of work. The hardest part definitely was feeding the tube into the attic here and putting it down, drilling those holes were a lot of work. So if you can do this before you build your home or during that process, I would highly recommend that. Or also make sure you just have the right tools so you don't break anything or drop anything down into the wall. Now, some of the other things is you can build this exactly the way you want. Maybe you don't need all of these devices. Maybe you only have an Apple TV. That could be pretty simple if you wanna hide it behind the TV. Um, but I really like this idea where we have everything over here. Um, nobody could go up there and accidentally unplug something or there's no wires possible that could be dangling down. And I like that we ended up doing the Wi-Fi point into the closet here because then it's not sitting around and we have all of those different devices directly connected over ethernet. So it's gonna be a really good connection and streaming should just be really great even when we upgrade to a 4K TV. Now, if I were to do this again, there are a few things that I would have changed. I would have liked to have a bigger tube going from here over to the TV. The one we used, it did the job for one or two cables, but it was extremely difficult to pull those cables through. And so if we did go with the bigger size tube, it probably would have been a lot more work to install it. But overall, the results would have been really nice to have. And the other thing is the little switch that we bought, how it automatically changes what HDMI we are on, is a little sensitive when you touch the power cord. So maybe I bumped it too much when we move things over here, but it will reboot every once in a while when I'm touching it. But as for all the other devices, everything seemed to work just great. So if you have any further questions about how to build your own entertainment center in the closet, please let us know in the comments below. And if you would like to see a list of all the different devices we used in today's video, I will leave them down in the description below. Now today we didn't show you how to set up the Harmony Hub, but if you wanna set up a device where you can control everything in your TV with one remote, you can check out the video over here on the side. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.